come in. Dear, dear, dear. You're always sleeping. Dear, 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 dear. Dreaming. The bread Things is right in front of you. you shiver, sweat, you're trying to get. I Ooh, want there you to go. shake you. Mm. To wake That's pretty you. good, isn't it? But I'm still outside I'm looking in. I'm knocking on your door. Don't worry, they're just cutting the tree down. Now I'm trying. Here you go. baby over here and have some bread. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley. It is a pleasant Sunday smoke. I just lit up a bowl of Dunhill Standard Mixture, one of my favorite basic, no-nonsense English blends. Not too strong, not too mild, just about perfect for me in terms of Latakia content. I like it a lot. I suggest you check it out. I've reviewed it. You can look that up on the channel if you so desire. I wanted to actually get out of the house for the Sunday smoke, I was hoping to go um, maybe to the, to the water, to the beach, and smoke a cigar, because I actually purchased a cigar based upon the recommendations of Suffolk Bumpkin. You should watch his channel if you haven't yet. A uh, good friend of the show, or the channel from the UK, and he suggested a Padron cigar, which I purchased, and I'm probably going to do a video of a pipe smoker smoking a cigar. I've hardly ever had a, had any cigars in my life, 
And the ones I have had, I don't know if they were any good. I don't remember what brands they were. Obviously, I've had like Swisher Sweets and stuff when I was 18. Um, but yeah, that should be interesting. I might do that on a Sunday smoke or I might do a specific video for that. Um, we shall see. Things that I've been getting done this weekend, I'm trying hard to get the videos that you guys want finished. I did record my review of the Midori Passport Size Traveler's Notebook. So this will be up this week, fear not. I have not yet recorded my review of the Caveco pen. I think I mentioned that I was having some hard starting problems with it, a little bit of skipping. So I did go ahead and use some micro mesh and worked on the nib a little bit. Now it's working absolutely fine. And obviously when I give the review, I'm going to have to mention the fact that it needed some work, but I wanted to make sure that the problem was what I thought the problem was before I recorded the video. So now I figured it was baby's bottom. For those of you who know about pen fountain pens, you'll know what that means. And so I did a little polishing on the blades. Well, not polishing on the blades. I did a little work on the nib with some micro mesh and that solved the problem. So it was baby's bottom, the problem is gone. So now I will do the review probably next week and I will mention, you know, you might have to do a little tuning on these nibs if you get a Caveco. It seems kind of common from other reviews that I've seen. I watched a review that SBRE Brown did fairly recently on a Caveco and he had the same issue. It seems like it's more common on the larger nibs, um, the broads and double broads, because this is a fine. Um, but yeah, a little bit of baby's bottom. Over polishing of the nib is, is the problem there. Ooh. Three tries for the Peterson, that's rare. What else? So I've got the Midori review done. Well, not done, but recorded. I need to do quite a bit of editing on that. Oh, yesterday I had an interesting encounter. A good friend of mine, very good friend of mine, he sent me a text. Um, He's been a cigarette smoker, not like a really heavy cigarette smoker, but he's enjoyed tobacco in cigarette form for quite a few years. And he texted me and said, hey man, I want to buy a pipe. I'm interested in ditching cigarettes and joining the pipe smoking hobby. He knows that I smoke a pipe. He knows, he sort of knew I had this channel, but didn't really know that much about it. I don't really tell my friends about this YouTube channel. Um, and I was like, great, okay, I will give you a pipe and then we can go down to the local tobacconist. We can maybe look into some of the house blends they have there because it's so expensive to buy tins in Washington state. It's like $25 for a tin of a Dunhill mix. So usually do the house blends when you go to the local tobacconist. Um, cause that, they're usually about seven bucks an ounce, something like that. So not horrible. Um, get your pipe tool, get you some pipe cleaners, do all that thing. And I was going to do that and then it occurred to me, oh yeah, I have a YouTube channel where I smoke pipes and talk about pipes and tobacco, so maybe I should try to record this. So I don't typically do the kind of vloggy walk and talk holding the camera thing. And I didn't have my fancy camera with me, I just had my iPhone. So I attempted to do a slice of life vlogging kind of walking talking video. And I'm going to be putting that up this week as well. It's kind of long. I'm editing it down a lot because there was a long period of us just smoking pipes and having a very disjointed conversation or rambling conversation, far ranging conversation. But the video will show us meeting up, show us going into the tobacco store, selecting a tobacco for him. Um, I also purchased my cigar at the same time. And then we finally find a nice place, a park, even though it's illegal now in Washington to smoke in the parks. We find a park. It was actually a beautiful day yesterday, even though it's raining like a bastard today here. Um, actually, it rained like a bastard yesterday too, but there was a, a window, a nice window of a nice sunny day. So anyway, that video will be up there. I thought it would be interesting for people, either if you're a new pipe smoker, you're looking into, get, looking into getting into the hobby. I think that works as a sentence. It's maybe interesting for you to see someone who's pretty much new to the hobby as well sort of experiencing that and then if you are an experienced pipe smoker and you have friends who might be interested you might find it i guess illustrative to see how you may present the hobby to someone who doesn't really know much about it so that video will be up this week as well so we have the midori passport size review we have the introducing a new pipe smoker to the pipe smoking hobby video. And then we will also have at least one uh, Stuff and Things Plays Fallout 4 video. So look at you guys, you're just so lucky. 
Look at all this content I'm just shoveling out for you. Shoveling makes it sound like shit, like I'm shoveling shit. Hopefully the quality is a little better than that. We'll see. Hmm. As I'm looking in my little book here, we passed 1 million views on the channel now. So a short while ago, we were celebrating 10,000 subscribers. Now 1 million views. Now I know that any doofus who cuts an orange peel into the shape of a helmet and puts it on a cat's head can get a million views on their channel. But for me, where I don't have any sort of gimmick, gimmick, gimmicky videos like that, I was pretty pleased to see that we passed 100 or a million and now it's well over, I don't know what it is, 130 or 1,030,000 or something like that. I can't remember. A lot of views. So I was very pleased with that. Obviously, thank you guys so much for watching. It's not a million different people, obviously. I know it's a lot of the same people doing those views. Probably me a lot of the time too, just like getting on videos to answer questions and comments and things like that. But still, a million views, I'm pretty happy about that, pretty excited about that. So that's very cool. And that being said, I'm constantly struck by how struck by how little trolling there is in the comment section on my videos. I'm, it's very surprising to me. Occasionally I'll get some jackass or doofus trying to troll, but for the most part, I don't. And when you look at other people's videos, maybe not in the YouTube pipe community or I don't know, the, the genre that I'm posting in, whether it be the fountain pens or the paper or knives, whatever. I, I don't see as much of that trolling maybe in those kinds of videos, but when you go just the typical YouTube video, the comment section is filled with vitriol and just horrible, horrible things. And that's not the case on my channel. And I really appreciate that. I just, it, it just goes to show that the people who watch stuff and things are for the most part, cool, nice, um, polite, well-intentioned people, and I appreciate that a lot. Oh, several people commented <clears throat> in the last video how I was talking about giving myself a haircut and then I wore a hat the entire time, um, which I guess, yeah, fair play to you guys. That is kind of weird. The, the, my hair is all messed up and screwed up, but it's just, it's a short haircut. That's all it is. Pseudo hipstery. I tried not to go too crazy with like an undercut or fade or something like that, but when I haven't been running around like a doofus and when I've actually been like showered and combed, I'll show you the haircut properly. Not that, why, why should any of you care anyway? The last thing I was going to talk about, I'm hesitant to discuss because in general I don't really talk too much about my personal life and even though most people who know me don't really know about this channel, there is always this, the chance that someone will hear something and then I'll get, you know, crap back at me from somebody who's pissed off about something I may have said. But I was just struck recently by, now here we go, we're gonna be completely overgeneralizing and just bear in mind that this is a complete overgeneralization. It doesn't, it does not apply to every single person but I'm going to be talking in broad generalities here for a little bit, so just bear that in mind. But in general, attractive women think that it's just a matter of course that if they ask a man out, he will go out with her. Now, the reason I say this is because this is happening recently to me. This has happened recently to me several times where I have, I have friends may find that hard to believe, but I do have friends. I have female friends, most of whom are in relationships. I don't have, well, I have some fe single female friends, but most of them are in relationships. Some are married, some are in long-term relationships. And it seems like that whenever you have a female friend who is happily in a relationship, she thinks it's her duty to make sure that you are happily in a relationship. Whereas I'm pretty happy being single most of the time and I have relationships. See, this is where I don't want to get too much involved in my personal life, but basically I date fairly regularly, regularly, but I usually am maintain a single status and I have many female friends who seem to take umbrage at this and they're always trying to get me to be in a relationship with someone. And they often have friends who they want to try to set me up with. And it seems like they just take it for granted that if their friend is reasonably attractive, I'm male and single, so of course I will go out with them. 
and they will sometimes work this out amongst themselves. It'll be someone who maybe I've met once or twice, don't really know them at all, but then I get some random text message from a number I don't know saying, hey, we're gonna go out. I'm like, who are you? How'd you get my phone number? So basically, my female friend has decided that I need to date their friend. They have given their friend my phone number. They have worked out, okay, you will go out with him on this day at this time. Go ahead and give him a text. I'm sure he'll do it. And it's kind of annoying. It just seems very presumptuous to me. If I had a male friend and he had a single female friend and I told my male friend, I would like to go out with this girl, give me her phone number. And then I just randomly texted her and said, hey, you, you don't really know me. We may have met once or twice, but we are going out. Wouldn't that be creepy? Wouldn't that be kind of weird? But women have this power, at least attractive women have this power. And, and they do. I agreed to go out with her. Well, this has been several things like this have happened recently and, and I have agreed to the date that was proposed. I don't know, it's just kind of weird. And I find myself like, do I have a say in this at all? Can I say no? Not that I, not that there's anything wrong with the people, but I feel, I kind of feel like I get my back up a little bit. I'm like, well, who, who are you to determine that I'm going to go out with this person? I have, I have some say in it, right? Don't I? I think so. So yeah, I just found that kind of odd. Don't want to get too much in depth with my personal life. So that's probably all I will say about that subject. So anyway. This was on my mind. I jotted it down, thought I'd bring it up. But I want to get to some editing here. I've got some things to do. I'm trying to get all these videos done for you guys. So I want to edit the Midori video, get that ready to put up. I'm not going to say a day, but it'll be this week. And then the video with my friend trying out pipe smoking, that will be up this week as well, probably. That's going to take a lot of editing because there's like an hour and a half of footage that I need to whittle down uh, to a more digestible size, I guess. But uh, definitely the Fallout 4 video will be out as well. So lots of stuff, lots of content. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm going to end the Sunday smoke for now, but I will see you again soon. So until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later.